in terms of algebra, it's actually so far today, it's not complicated, even in terms of just general problem solving, it's again, not that complicated. So what I want you to do is develop your intuition for special relativity. There are ways in which quantities change that. I think uh, everyone is unfamiliar from their non-relativistic intuition. So for this question, um, it's uh, saying, yeah, it, it says a spaceship of some length, it's uh, moving by, it's asking for its length as measured by an earthbound observer. So I don't do this often, but even without drawing any figure, you can kind of get at what this question is asking. It's asking for length contraction. <laughs> so <laughs> it comes down to trying to remember between um, between the, the proper length, the LP, and this would be the proper length, and the length in the as measured on Earth, L, what the relationship between these two are. And uh, you know there's uh, some vector of gamma involved. And the phrase that'll help you remember is that, remember which side the gamma goes, is uh, the phrase relating to the Lorentz or length contraction. The moving rulers are short. And again, remembering that vector gamma is always greater than one. What you need to do is um, figure, okay, so if I divide the proper length by gamma, then I can get a length that's measured on the left in the lap frame or earth frame that's going to be shorter than the, the proper length. So, um, so that's the expression and you plug the numbers in and uh, you get it. So, um, so let me do that. Uh, this uh, at 0 0.9 C is, 9.5 C is where it starts to, um, numbers starts to get kind of unfamiliar. So let me just plug in the numbers. One divided by the thing under the square root, one minus 0 0.95 squared, um, close the parenthesis and then take the square root is equal to 3.203, that's my gamma. So, um, so what this means is whatever length something is, it's gonna decrease in length uh, to a factor of a third or decrease by a factor of a third. So um, so for a spaceship that was originally 140 meters long, let me just put this into storage, a 140 divided by memory recall, 43.7 meters. So that's how short the earthbound observer would measure the ship to be. And the thing that I think I've always had a difficulty getting my head around is the fact that um, as this spaceship approaches speed of light, the length of spaceship would basically shrink down to zero. And um, I think I have an easier time thinking about time dilation, just because with the time dilation, there are actually a lot of uh, real life experiments that clearly demonstrate time dilation effects. Length of contraction is the one that's more in the realm of Gedanken experiment or thought experiments. And uh, you do have a question, I think it's question nine, that um, with the muon, decay of muon, where you get to look at the alternate picture view, where uh, you could calculate the um, how long a muon lives in the Earth frame, that's the time dilation picture, but you can also look at how far the muon travels um, as measured in the earth frame, but by doing the calculation in the muons of frame with the length of contraction. Um, but it's uh, hard to be in that actual moving frame as your left frame. So in this question, it's similar to the time dil dilation question that you have seen before. Um, you are given enough information to figure out gamma. And what I've been telling you is that once you know gamma, so let's say from these two pieces of information, somehow you get gamma, then uh, knowing the Lorentz factor is basically the same thing as knowing the speed, because this gamma is related to speed this way. I drafted this earlier. Speed beta or V over C is equal to square root of one minus one over gamma squared. 
I haven't memorized it because I use it often enough. Um, so let me just do that. And here I can actually figure out what gamma is without doing a lot of consideration because I just know this about gamma, that it's always gonna be bigger than one. And with this contracted length and the, the proper length, I'm just gonna be taking ratios. So there are only two ways of doing it. One way of it gives me a number less than one. So that must be wrong. So let me do it in the way that'll give me a number bigger than one. And that must be right. <laughs> so the way that will give me a number bigger than one is 5.7 divided by 5.244. Okay, and so that's my gamma. Let me store that, yeah, let me store that into memory. And uh, I need to calculate for beta, square root of, so let me just put all that thing together into one. One minus one divided by, I need a gamma squared, so let me do memory recall, and then square it. Okay, I can't quite see the whole expression, but I think that's right. Let me close the parenthesis and then take the square root. Okay, 0 0.392C, 0.392C. So in terms of methods, you know, all pretty easy. I think the, really the thing again that I, Hope you will put time into is uh, starting to develop intuition for these, frankly, new quantities, uh, relativistic speeds and the Lorentz factor gamma.